Today's video is about prolactin testing. Prolactin is a major hormone responsible for the production of the breast milk. In this video, we are going to discuss about why is it tested in the first place? What are the symptoms, symptoms associated in, in increased prolactin disorders? What is the basic function of function of prolactin? What is the normal ranges? Normal range. How do you interpret the results? What, what will be the further course of evaluation if there are any in the presence of any abnormal uh, values? So let us see why, why is it tested. The major symptoms which which are seen in the presence of prolactin disorders are first one being say if any person is coming with specifically infertility symptoms symptoms of infertility infertility or irregular menstruation and persons having symptoms of prolactinoma prolactinoma as an in increased mass of the prolactin small prolactin producing tumor prolactinoma and complaints of galactoria 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 is excess production of the milk even during non pregnant stages and decreased sexual drive loss of libido and low testosterone low testosterone these two are especially seen in males basically pro prolactin prolactin is a hormone prolactin prolactin name itself indicates prolactin is before before lactin lactation prolactin is a basic hormone which is produced before lactation where is it produced from if you look at the cross section of the human brain this particular region this particular region over here is is a site for pituitary gland and that is where the plaque is produced and if you can lie this particular part and this is somewhat it looks like something like this so this particular green green part what we call is hypothalamus 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 and this part is called as posterior region which is called as posterior pituitary and this is called as anterior pituitary gland anterior pituitary gland is that particular part where we where prolactin is produced where prolactin is produced like we have discussed prolactin is a major hormone which is associated with the production of the milk during pregnancy so how does it act here if you see here is a breast tissue over here if you see the breast tissue the, if, if this is the breast tissue over here once the prolactin is produced this prolactin has a stimulatory effect on the mammary glands of the breast tissue mammary glands are the glands which produce milk so as in when the, when the pregnancy immediately after the pregnancy and the, when the baby is delivered what happens is like the prolactin levels will be he increased from the anterior pituitary the anterior pituitary starts secreting the prolactin once this prolact upon the action of the prolactin this basic prolactin will stimulate the breast tissue to produce this is the milk the major function of the prolactin is to initiate initiate and sustain the production of the milk initiate and sustain throughout the nursing period the prolactin levels will be very high and which will make sure that the adequate breast adequate milk is produced for the newborn baby another important function associated with the prolactin is like not only it initiates the production of the milk it has an inhibitory effect on the reproductive system 
reproductive system it has an inhibitory effect on the reproductive system how does it do that basically it decreases the e, e, sex hormones female sex hormones sex hormones and as a result of this there will be an issues with an ovulation will be happening we don't we don't be having any menstrual cycles apart from that it also decreases the sexual drive it is very interesting to see that this particular nursing period is a very critical stage for the for the mother and all the resources need to be focused on nursing the newborn only so prolactin is that particular hormone which makes sure that all the resources are going through the for the nursing of the baby and it since the body cannot afford another pregnancy at this time it, it automatically suppresses the reproductive system by having a negative effects on the sexual hormones this specific feature of the prolactin is very important uh, in understanding why it is tested during other causes of infertility and all Let's talk about the normal ranges which are associated with prolactin. Normal ranges in males, males are usually less than 20. Normal ranges in males are less than 20. Whereas in females, it can be categorized into three different stages. The normal ranges in the non-pregnant females and then ranges in pregnant, during pregnancy and postmenopause. Out of all these three D types, during the time of pregnancy you end up having a maximum levels of prolactin levels which reach somewhere around like 200 whereas in the non-pregnant stage usually the levels are less than 30 whereas in the postmenopausal stage they hover around 20 so so now the testing is done and your test results have shown increased prolactin levels increased prolactin levels so what are the different things which you need to think when you see increased prolactin levels and by the way, the increased prolactin levels is called as hyperprolactinemia. Hyper, hyperprolactinemia. Hyper means increase. Prolactin is the hormone and emia is the blood. The presence of increased levels of prolactin in the blood is called as hyperplaquemia. So once you came up, so what are the different things which you need to think when you see a, a patient with hyperprolactinemia? The different causes which which need to be evaluated in increased prolactin levels are like you know, especially in females, the causes can be hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism thyroidism hypothyroidism is one of the most common cause like you know which results in increased prolactin we'll get into the mechanism a little later and also it is associated with pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome is another cause where uh, there will be elevated elevated prolactin levels uh, the other causes in, in indicates uh, use of medication specific medications medication specific medication specifically antipsychotics 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 all the drugs which which uh, which block dopamine levels dopamine blockers dopamine blockers all the drugs which act by blocking dopamine levels are also supposed to increase uh, plaquin levels and is called as hyperplaquin and another cause is Another another important thing, another significant cause is uh, pituitary tumor. Pit, pit, pituitary tumor. Pituitary tumor also called as pituitary or adenoma. Or adenoma. This is another cause where the, the levels are definitely increased. There are two, basing on the size, it can be a micro adenoma or macro. Macro, based on the size of the tumor, it can be called as microadenoma or macroadenoma. So, these are the scenarios where, uh, which are associated with increased prolactin levels. But the highest level of prolactin levels are seen with highest levels of prolactin level prolactin increase is seen with uh, pituitary level. Whenever you see you have done a prolactin test and if the levels are five times the upper level, five times the upper level, say the upper level is 30 and if you are seeing a patient somewhere around um, greater than greater than 200, 150 to greater than 150 to 200. So something around greater than 150 to 200, these levels are definitely are most likely indicative of a tumor. 
in all the other causes will increase levels of prolactin but usually they will be in terms of like you know less than less than 100 to uh, uh, or less than 100 or 100 to 150 but whenever you see a significant increase in in the prolactin levels you always need to rule out uh, there is a good, fair fair chance that this person may be having a pituitary tumor another most common cause for uh, increased prolactin levels is hypothyroidism hypothyroidism so what exactly is happening during hypothyroidism hypothyroidism is a condition where there will be a decrease of total t3 and t4 levels t3 and t4 levels as a result of decrease what happens is like usually it stimulates the hypothalamus region to produce more another hormone called as thyroid releasing hormone thyroid releasing hormone this thyroid releasing hormone is produced from the hypothalamus and it stimulates the anterior pituitary anterior pituitary this one is thyroid releasing hormone thyroid releasing hormone is produced from hypothalamus so usually in response to the hypothyroidism this trh is produced from the anterior pituitary this as a result of this this anterior pituitary in turn stim produces another hormone called as thyroid stimulating hormone this eventually acts on the thyroid this eventually acts on the thyroid to produce to produce more more t3 and t4 so what is actually observed in this particular scenario is like this trh which is supposed to stimulate the production of tsh it is also for some strange reason it is also causing an increase of prolactin levels too it is also causing the stimulation of that particular cells which produce prolactin and hence the levels of prolactin so increases so one of the most one of the common one of the common thing which you need to rule out is hypothyroidism and hyperplactinemia another most common cause of increased prolactin is is the use of medication use of certain medications specifically antipsychotics antipsychotics and how do they actually act interesting mechanism responsible for this particular thing is like this hypothalamus over here is is connected to the anterior pituitary by the presence by the connection there is a small connections usually it includes the presence of so many nerves and these nerves secrete a chemical by name of dopamine dopamine what is the major what is the function of dopamine dopamine basically inhibits prolactin prolactin dopamine basically inhibits prolactin so like everybody knows like this prolactin is only responsible only during only helpful during during lactation so rest of the time we need to have some kind of control mechanism to stop the release of prolactin so, so how is it is achieved how is it achieved this particular dopamine chemical this almost and always will be inhibiting the prolactin as and when required now comes the medication several antipsychotic medications several antipsychotic medications their main mechanism of action is they inhibit dopamine so they inhibit dopamine so as and when they inhibit dopamine eventually what happens is like it results in increased prolactin levels so it is a very common occurrence like patients who are on antipsychotic medications usually they have decreased sexual drive and loss of libido and uh, and low, low testosterone the main reason for this particular thing is like all these antipsychotic medication basically they they inhibit dopamine levels which in turn increase the release of prolactin and this is a, the prolactin is the main culprit associated with all the side effects of the associated all the side effects associated with antipsychotic drugs along with antipsychotic drugs there are some other most common other drugs like cimetidine or ran ranitidine these are two drugs which are used in gastritis even those can cause elevation of prolactin levels remember the, these how how much amount of prolactin levels are increased well they are dependent on the dosage required but most of the time the levels will be usually less than 150 less than 150 so this is the way like how the majority of these antipsychotic drugs and some medications will increase the levels of uh, prolactin.
and coming to the other causes like you know pituitary adenomas 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 are the small benign cancers which are present in the in the pituitary region in the in this pituitary region adenomas adenomas can be of two types micro and macro macro micro endomas are something so if the size of the adenoma is less than 10 mm we call it as micro endoma if it is greater than 10 mm we call it as a macro endoma adenomas are the ones where the levels are usually greater than in hundreds in hundreds adenomas are the conditions where you see levels are increased in multiples of hundreds multiples of hundreds at least there will be a five times elevation of the levels so persons usually having an adenoma along with the basing on the sides usually they have uh, clinical features will be mostly pointing towards adenoma they will be having some head symptoms like headache and visual disturbances and visual disturbances not all the persons with elevated prolactin are due to adenoma adenoma is like you know before before going to uh, for adenoma for the diagnosis of adenoma all the other causes need to be ruled out first and then only uh, uh, we need to think about adenoma adenoma basically it is diagnosed uh, by taking an mri in the mri uh, they basically they measure the size of the pituitary and basing on that in correlation with the prolactin levels they make a diagnosis of adenoma so whenever whenever your doctor sees an increased prolactin levels he might be ordering some other other tests too so the sequence of evaluation will be like you know they will be evaluating the uh, hypothyroidism first hypothyroid they may they will be evaluating for the hypothyroidism by ordering some thyroid function test they may go for an ultrasound for uh, uh, for diagnosing polycystic ovarian syndrome and they will rule out evaluate all the medications which you are taking medication evaluation and then they will also in the presence of symptoms they will evaluate evaluation should be done for the presence of adenoma i hope this video answered majority of your questions regarding uh, i hope this video answered majority of the questions regarding um, pituitary testing if you still have further questions feel feel free to comment in the comment sections below and like always we always try to answer uh, as many questions as possible please do like subscribe and share